you probably know him as the monarch who had to wait longest at his chance at the British throne. Or perhaps as the ex-husband and widower of Lady Diana Spencer. But who is King Charles III really? What did his long road to the throne really look like? Here's the story of the man behind the crown. At birth, Charles already achieved his first first, his birth on November 14, 1948 at Buckingham Palace was the first not to be attended by a senior politician, to double-check that the baby was genuinely descendant from the British royals. His parents were then Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip. At age three, Charles became heir apparent when his mother ascended the throne. At age four, he was famously depicted sitting between the Queen Mother and his mother's sister Princess Margaret at the coronation. From then on, he would remain in the public spotlight. Charles's childhood was often described as lonely, and he would sometimes go without seeing his parents for months. When he reached schooling age, Charles once again did something no other heir had done, he was the first to be sent to school, receiving an outside education rather than being taught by a private tutor. When he was 14, Charles was sent to Gordonstown School, where he was often bullied by his fellow students. If anyone was nice to Charles, they would make slurping noises, while also throwing slippers or pillows at the king-to-be. Charles was also the first heir to the throne to be granted a bachelor's degree. Despite mediocre A-level results, and not having sat an entrance exam, he was admitted to Cambridge, where he studied archaeology, anthropology and, later, history. During this time, Charles was also given the title of Prince of Wales. When Charles met Camilla Shand in 1971, he perhaps didn't know that their lives would remain constantly intertwined. They fell in love, but the two were separated when Charles, following in the footsteps of his father, grandfather and great-grandfather, joined the Royal Navy. In 1980, despite his apparent ongoing love for Camilla, Charles began dating Lady Diana Spencer when he was 31 and she only 19. The famous wedding, which was watched by people all over the world, took place in July, 1981 at St. Paul's Cathedral. Diana was an instant star, with the public attention towards her being immensely favorable, perhaps due to her charitable involvement for causes like HIV, AIDS, leprosy patients and homelessness. The two had two children, Prince William, born on June 21, 1982, and Prince Harry, born September 15, 1984. The two brothers would go on to be part of a so-called royal rift. Harry felt that William was not accepting of his marriage with Meghan Markle, one of very few biracial members who have historically belonged to the royal family. With Diana's popularity, came Charles's period of unpopularity, especially when the couple separated in 1992, the heir admitted that he had been in a long-running affair with Camilla, and Diana's tragic death in a car crash in Paris. In 2004, Charles and Camilla announced their engagement and got married the following year, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. When the Queen died in September of last year, she was the longest-serving monarch. Her son, Charles, immediately took over the throne after waiting for seven decades. He will be known as King Charles III. Now, he is awaiting his coronation, set to take place on Saturday, May 6. The public will witness him being formally crowned in Westminster Abbey, the royal church that has housed coronations for the past 900 years, starting with William the Conqueror. The Anglican religious service will be carried out by the Archbishop of Canterbury, who will place the St. Edward's crown on Charles's head during the peak of the ceremony. This solid gold crown is only worn by the monarch at the exact coronation moment. Though Charles's road to the throne is almost over, 
he has plenty of work left to do in a Britain that is divided on whether the royal family fits into the 21st century.